Well, hallelujah, friends and blessings. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of living, and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God sing, hallelujah. What a great and mighty God that we serve. Well, friends, today is June the 11th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, which reads, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, forasmuch as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. But the verse begins with, therefore. So it's a culmination of thoughts being finalized in one statement. And the statement is simple. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Well, for the answer to that, we must back up to verse 42. Verse 42 says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Now to gather our thoughts here and get on the mindset that we're going to go down this morning, let me break this down for you. We are made in corruption. All those things that we desire to do that we know is found unpleasing to our Lord, we're made that way. And the reason that we're made that way is because of the curse that was placed upon us at the fall of man. But it says this is going to be short-lived because once we exit this physical body and we step into the spiritual realm, we are going to be raised in incorruption. Can you imagine, friends, never having the desire to lie again? Never having the desire to deceive again? never having the desire to cheat again, to steal again, never having the desire to be angry, to be jealous, to hold a grudge, to be resentful. Our only desire will be to bring pleasure to the Lord whom we serve. And so these bodies that are made in corruption, we will be raised in incorruption. Verse 43, we are made in dishonor. There is nothing good in us. Everything about us displeases the Lord. It's only the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we stand in that we find favor with God. If we step out of Jesus Christ and stand upon our own, we are guilty and deserving of hell. And so we have been made or sown in dishonor, but we will be raised in glory. Now think about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was so glorified that human beings could not even look upon him. He shone brighter than the sun. That will be you and I, friends. We will be raised in the same way that Jesus Christ himself was raised. We will be glorified in the same way that Jesus Christ will be glorified. This doesn't mean that we will be equal with him, but we'll manifest his glory. We are made in weakness, but we will be raised in power. Left upon our own, we're weak to the things of God. Our willpower just isn't good enough to the things that seek to corrupt us. But on that day, we will be raised in power, in His power. You see, verse 44 tells us that we are sown a natural body, but we will be raised in a spiritual body. Will we look the same? I'm certain we will. Jesus looked the same. He still had the holes in His hands. He still had the scar in His side. But we will be raised spiritual bodies. We don't quite know what that means. But we won't carry these physical bodies. That's for sure. We won't age. We won't carry the ailments of this body. We won't carry diseases and sicknesses. We will leave those things behind at the moment we step out of this body. You see, he says there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Just like there is the sun and there is the moon. They're like each other but absolutely different. And so will be these bodies. He says in verse 45, So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now, of course, the last Adam is in reference to Jesus. And so Jesus wasn't a living soul. Jesus was a quickening spirit. He was everything that the Father is in the flesh. Verse 46, How be it, 
that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural came first. And afterward came that which is spiritual, just like we're living in these physical bodies, but we're going to step into spiritual bodies. But the natural must come first. Now, remember, Jesus said you must be born again. And Nicodemus didn't get this in John chapter 3. And so in Jesus' explanation, he says you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Now, there are those that have misapplied that. And they said, see, you have to be baptized in order to be saved. Well, then the thief on the cross is in bad shape. And there are many others who've taken the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and they've never been baptized. They were killed prematurely before they had a chance to get baptized for whatever reason but they weren't baptized. You're telling me these people are lost? Absolutely not. What Jesus is saying is the same thing Paul is telling us here in verse 46. The natural has to come first, then the spiritual. We must be born of the water, then we must be born of the spirit. And so the water is speaking of the flesh because a woman's water breaks and ushers us into this world. And so the spirit ushers us into the kingdom of God. Verse 47, the first man is of the earth, The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit has designed this passage this way because he didn't just simply make the statement once and leave in a single verse and move on to another thought but he is pounding this thought into us so it'll stick, so that we'll become aware of it, so that our hearts will become overjoyed. We as the people of God will be filled with praise and give him all the praise and the glory that he deserves for such promises. Because there are many things about this life, there are many things about this body that I don't want to carry into eternity, and I'm sure you don't either. And yet we're being promised we're going to be given new bodies. And for that, we should shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Well, we learned in verse 42, we are corrupt. We are dishonorable. And so in the state that we're in, we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. We must be glorified through the power and the victory that Jesus Christ offers us. Verse 51, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And when it says sleep there, it's speaking of death. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Hallelujah. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption... And this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. There's no need to fear dying if you're a child of the living God. If you're a follower of the Lord Jesus, we should welcome death. I mean, as Christians, think about it this way. When someone is born into this world, we celebrate new babies, new births. And when they exit this world, we weep and we mourn. But in all actuality, it should be absolutely different. When we're born into this evil, sick, deprived world, we should weep and mourn for the misery, the pain, and the suffering that's going to come upon that little one as he grows in this life. And when a saint of God exits this world, we should celebrate. It should be a joyous experience because they've entered into the kingdom of their God. He says in verse 56, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now to our text, therefore, understanding and realizing and knowing all of these things, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why? Because everything you're doing is going to be rewarded with a new body, immortality, uncorruption, honor, power. These are the things that we've been promised. And so I'll say it again. Therefore, knowing this, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding 
in the work of the Lord. And what is the work of the Lord? It's found right here in these pages from Genesis to Revelation. It's being obedient to the things that our God has commanded. And what he is telling us here through the Holy Spirit is that we are to be steadfast. We are to be consistent. We are to be determined. We are to be unmovable, unshakable, uncompromising, always, without fail, abounding, which is going above and beyond the call of duty in the service of our Lord. Like the old song says, what a day that will be when my Jesus I will see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and he leads me into the promised land, what a day, what a glorious day that will be. And friends, as much as we anticipate that day, I assure you that you can know a slice of that glory in this life. You can know a slice of that joy in this life. You can know a slice of that peace in this life. You can know a slice of this power of this honor, of this favor, in this life. Why? Because he's given it to us through his spirit who lives within us. The living God lives within us. And if we are not experiencing that joy, that power, that honor, that favor, and that peace, we have no one to blame but ourselves. And so what we must do is we must take inventory of our lives and see what it is Look through a spiritual microscope and find what it is that's robbing and stealing you of such joy, peace, honor, favor, and power. And once you remove that from your life, friends, I'll promise you, you can say with Paul, as in verse 57, thanks be to God who gives us the victory, not is going to give us, but who gives us presently the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I pray, friend, that the word of God has lifted your spirits, challenged your heart, and blessed your minds. And I pray that your journey as you walk with Jesus today will be one filled with the promises of all the things to come. That you, as you are listening right now, will experience those riches of heaven's blessings as you walk throughout your day. I love you, friends. As Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.